Right now, we'd like to bring back a wonderful lady who's been on our show several times this year, and she really breaks everything up. And I know you're going to be happy to see her again. So let's have a big hand for Moms Mabley. <laughs> It's great to have you back on the show. Oh, it's nice being here, honey. You know, I, I'm telling you something. I've been swinging since I live here. Oh, yeah. You know, and tell, to tell you the truth, boy, it's nice to be anywhere at my age. <laughs> you know that old saying that you're only as old as you feel, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what you can say. Because you ain't got a wrinkle on your body. <laughs> but, honey, listen to mom. Yeah. When you, you ain't as old as you feel, mm -hmm. you feel as old as you is. Well, I guess you're right, you know, but uh, you've really gone over big on this show. You know, you should see the, the stacks and stacks of letters, the people writing and raving about you. They just love you. you but, you know, I might, I might add that some of them asked the same question over and over again. They, yes. They wanted to know, well, they were wondering if you have, uh, if you've uh, got any other clothes. Oh, yeah. Oh. I got out of clothes, but I, Mom likes to look her best when I'm on television. <laughs> I, I, I owe that much to my public. Yeah. Sure do. <laughs> I think you look fine. The fact is, we like you so much, Mom. Uh, we're thinking about making you a regular. Regular what? <laughs> you know, look what I mean. A regular it means you would work exclusively for us. Now, how would you like that? Oh, I'd like that fine. It's all right for me, but you got to clear it with Miss Marcus. Clear it with Mrs. Mar Who's, who is Miss Marcus? That's the lady I go to on Thursday. <laughs> I think we'll work something out. So why don't you just talk to the folks, okay? All right, sir. Bless your pretty heart. A man was out riding on the freeway, and uh, he met a, hit a hitchhiker was on the side of the road, one of the boys, you know hitchhiking, so he picked him up. So they was driving along down the road, and the man was talking to him, said, where you going, son? He says, I don't know, man, anywhere you go is all right with me. <laughs> so the man was talking to him, he passed the road he's supposed to turn off at. He said, oh my goodness, I done passed the road I supposed to turn off at. So I got to back up, I got to go down that road. So he told him, he said, look out and see if you see anything coming. So he looked out. He said, I don't see nothing but a dog. So the man backed out and just as he hit the freak, wait, bam! Something hit him, knocked him through the windshield, cut his face and everything, broke his arm. He said, man, I thought you said you didn't see nothing coming but a dog. He said, yeah, man, but it was a greyhound. <laughs> woman was sick. She got very bad off. She was dying. Sent for her husband. Wanted to make a confession before she died. Her husband came up there crying. She said, honey, I'm dying. He said, yes, I know. She said, but I got a confession to make before I die. She said, I haven't been true to you. She said, I've been running around with other men. He said, yes, I know. That's the reason I poisoned you. <laughs> that colored boy went to any grade school. Only one in school. So they come up that evening for the spelling class and everything. He little Johnny sitting there with his little white shirt on and a little tie, looking all night. So the teacher, the white teacher, so she, looked, she looked over at one little boy and says, uh, Jimmy, spell cat. Little Jimmy jumped up. The white boy says, C-A-T, cat. He says, that's right. That's nice, Jimmy. Looked at another white boy and said, Tommy, spell rat. He said, R-A-T, rat. He said, that's good. He said, how? He said, Johnny. Spell Chris Anthemum. <laughs> Johnny says, what color, white or pink? <laughs> she said, pink. He 
It's a P-I-N-K-P. <laughs> But you know, the woman's husband died and she bought him a nice casket, put on air, rest in peace. So that night they had to wait. I don't know where you all have wakes or not, but we do. That's where you go and talk about everybody and eat up all the food. <laughs> so as they was at the wake, this woman was sitting over in the corner crying, my poor husband, my poor husband's gone. So another old mouthy woman went over to her. Somebody always want to start something. She walked over to her and she said, Mary, what you crying like that for? She said, my poor husband, I loved him so much. Surprise you, I wouldn't be crying like that. He went with other women besides you. She said, what? She said, yes, he did. I know what I'm talking about, honey. I know. So she called Undertaker. She says, Undertaker, she said, can I have that? Rest in peace, take off of that casket. He said, no, it's too late now. I said, well, can I add to it? She said, yeah, you can add to it. So she wrote on that, rest in peace until we meet again. <laughs> Then another time, a colored fellow and a white fellow held up a bank down there. So they shot the bank teller, two, three clerks, wounded a couple of women. So they sentenced them to be hung. So about a week before they were to be hung, this colored fellow was walking around in the cell whistling, singing way, uh, singing St. Louis blues and popping his fingers as happy as he could be. This white fellow sitting over in the corner crying. He said, I don't want to die. I don't want to be hung. I don't want to die. Please don't let him hang me. This white fellow said, oh, shut up, man. So we done held up the bank and done killed up all them people. And you come talking about you don't want to die. So take it like a man, like I do. He says, that's easy for you to say, because you're used to it. <laughs>